A 5,000-year-old Noah Ark, was it really discovered in Turkey? And if this is the case, why did the Turkish government led by Recep Tayyip Erdogan hide this incredible discovery from the world? Where exactly are the remains of the famous Noah's Ark, which for decades aroused the curiosity of thinkers, religious figures and archaeologists from all over the world? Well, in this video, we'll answer all these questions as we explore the history of a mind-blowing Ark and the mysteries behind it. The story of Noah's Ark is found in holy books, namely the Bible and the Quran. The story revolves around a worldwide flood, and God uses the Ark to save Noah, his family, and two animals of each species. It should be noted that in Islamic tradition, the question of whether the flood was global or local is controversial. In the Quran, the Ark is called Safina. Researchers from all over the world have long been searching for Noah's Ark, but there is no evidence proving the exact location where it landed after the flood. In addition, there is no scientific evidence of a catastrophic flood that would have hit the entire world. So, some researchers suggest that a smaller flood could have inspired the story of Noah. They point to events like a flood in the Persian Gulf or a deluge in the Black Sea around 7,500 years ago as possible influences. The Quran tells the story of the prophet Noah and his people in a number of chapters, namely chapter 71, known as Surah Nuh, chapter 11 called Surah Hud, as well as in chapter 23, known as Surah Al-Muminun. In these chapters, we learn that God appointed Noah as a prophet to his people who was doing evil on earth. Noah tried to bring them to the right path. After these people had turned a deaf ear to Noah's message for several years, God gave Noah specific instructions to build a huge ark. The goal was to save those who accepted his message and pairs of animals from a massive flood intended to punish transgressors. The punishment came continuous rains, followed by catastrophic floods submerging everyone in a deluge. That being said, scientists have asked various questions regarding the ark. Some addressed questions such as how Noah was able to handle waste management and keep maintain fresh air inside the boat. How would the ark be able to carry enough water for the duration of the flood? How could fresh air be collected and stored and so on? But the question that concerns more our topic is, if Noah's flood happened and he took a few humans and pairs of animals on a giant ark to escape the punishment of water, then where did the ark go? This vital question concerns the mystery of the location of the ark, and it is the main focus of this video. Let's dive into it for a moment. For decades, many people have claimed to have discovered Noah's Ark, often focusing on Mount Ararat in eastern Turkey. Some of them believe they found the remains of the Ark at the site of Ararat and believe that the Ark landed there after the flood, around 5,000 years ago. However, other scientists have cast doubt on this claim, suggesting that it is impossible for a wooden structure to survive for more than 4,000 years especially given the volcanic activity that Mount Ararat experienced until the 19th century. Despite this, Mount Ararat has attracted much curiosity from scientists and archaeologists around the world, focusing their attention on this site. Several expeditions have taken place there, and researchers have often suggested evidence of human activity near a boat-like rock shape on Mount Ararat. It's not all. Another historical figure, Flavius Josephus, once claimed that pieces of the Ark were in Armenia, now identified as Mount Ararat in Turkey. However, contemporary experts view these claims with great caution, suggesting that they may resemble imaginary tales rather than true archaeology. In 2003, a satellite image of Mount Ararat, now known as the Ararat Anomaly, further attracted the attention of scientists. The aerial shot showed an elongated structure whose dimensions resembled Noah's Ark, increasing once again the popularity of this site. However, despite the intriguing visual resemblance, no scientific expedition has confirmed whether this is indeed the exact location of Noah's Ark or not. The object in the photo could be nothing more than a natural rock formation. It is within this framework that a group of researchers from Turkish and American universities undertook for almost a year to exhaustively examine the composition of the rocks and soils of the famous Durupinar Formation, which is located on the Mount Ararat, the highest peak in Turkey. Their sole objective was to examine whether there were any potential remains of Noah's Ark at the site. These archaeologists have suggested compelling evidence of human presence near the distinctive site which has a shape of a boat nestled in the mountains. 
They believe people inhabited this place during the period after the flood. Professor Farouk Kaya, vice rector of Ibrahim Chechen University and one of the archaeologists who participated in the expedition, highlighted the importance of their findings, saying, in terms of dating, we discovered the signs of life in this region. This was revealed by laboratory results. However, although the discovery of human activities near Durupinar is interesting, it does not provide definitive proof of the presence of Noah's Ark in the area. In short, modern archaeologists reject the idea that a global flood occurred as described in religious scriptures, including the Bible. The possibility of local flooding being a topic of debate, but lacking unanimous support due to lack of scientific evidence. So, what does Islam say about the place where Noah's Ark landed? In Surah Hud, verse 44, the Holy Quran indicates that Noah's Ark stopped on a high mountain known as Judi. The Greek-born Arab geographer Yakut al-Hamawi, also known as al-Rumi, found Mount Judi to be above Jazirat ibn Umar, east of the Tigris. He mentioned a mosque built by Noah, which could be seen in his time. He said that even the great explorer Ibn Battuta has passed near the mountain in the 14th century. Other Muslim scholars suggest that Noah's Ark floated on the waters for six months and eight days before landing on Mount Judi on the 10th of Muharram, which is the first month of the Islamic calendar, Hijri. After the earth was completely dry, Prophet Noah got out of the boat and began rebuilding in order to start a new life which marked the beginning of a new era after the flood. According to some sources, Prophet Noah spent an additional 60 years after the flood. So, what do you think of the Noah's Ark discoveries in Turkey? Had you heard about that before? In your opinion, how was Noah able to bring together two animals from all species, when some of them lived thousands of miles in different parts of the world, far from the where Noah was building the Ark? Please share your opinion in the comment section below. Thank you very much for your time. Assalamu alaikum.